Hey there, have you been noticing that you're craving sugar and carbs more in perimenopause and menopause? You are not crazy, I promise, and you're not the only one. I have yet to meet a woman that does not crave carbs and sugars more during this phase in her life. So today I wanna share three simple steps that you can use so you don't give in to all of those sugar and carb cravings. I want you to regain control around sugar and carbs. So then when you're presented with your favorite sugar treat, like a brownie or a cookie or a cupcake, um, or all this bread and pasta, I want you to know what to do to manage that craving and how to resist that urge to eat them. So, and I'm thinking chocolate right now. <laughs> I have a little secret stash of dark chocolate chips that I usually keep in my refrigerator right over there. Um, and as long as my boys don't get to them first, I oftentimes I will notice if I just grab as a very small handful of dark chocolate chips when I'm really craving something chocolatey and sugary, that that will help. And you wanna try to choose dark chocolate more than 70%, I believe, um, and it's healthier for you. Um, so dark chocolate's actually not bad in small amounts. It's actually healthy for us. So that's my little secret. Um, that's one way that I help to manage my sugar and carb cravings, but I'm gonna walk you through these three steps. If we've not met yet, my name is Nicole Dalton. I have been a family medicine physician assistant for over 20 years now, turned weight loss coach for women 35 and older. I want to help you lose weight so you can make the second half of your life full of exciting adventures, tons of energy. I want you to enjoy your retirement and your family around you and grandbabies or potential grandbabies. And I want you to live a full, active, happy, healthy second half of your life by losing the weight down to a healthy weight that your body feels good. If you have not joined my free Facebook community, Weight Loss for Midlife Women, I encourage you and I invite you to come on over, check, check us out. I'm also super excited to announce a new offer that I'm offering, okay? So if you're ready to get this weight off and you're ready to start right after Labor Day, then I want you to apply now to coach with me, okay? I wanna help you lose the weight and I don't wanna stop at the holidays. I have a 16 week program. So I actually want to extend and give you an extra free month of coaching that will last you through into the new year. So you'll get five months of coaching for the price of four months. So if you're ready to start coaching, take action now to save money. You can save up to about $800 by starting working together now. If you are ready to start after Labor Day, then please apply for coaching and I will link that in the show notes. Okay, so this has been, what a summer this has been, okay? If you're like me, if you're feeling like me, I feel like I'm, I'm ready now to just like hunker down and settle in um, and just get back into our normal routines of work and school um, and exercise and healthy eating and to just get that routine and new routines back in running. Um, I feel like my summer has just been full of travel, which has been awesome. We were able to travel to Italy and most recently we went to Colorado to drop my oldest son off to college out west. And one thing I noticed when we were out in Colorado, one morning I got up super early because I am usually an early riser and I found the start to a trailhead right in the mountains of Breckenridge and it was right behind our hotel. So I got up early and I went for a hike and I wanted to jog too and run to get my heart rate up. So. Um, this trailhead was gorgeous. There was tall evergreen trees. It was quiet, it was peaceful. There wasn't many other people on the trail. It was gorgeous. So I started jogging and I had this beautiful creek, just this fast flowing creek 
along um, just kind of, I was following, the trail was following that creek and there was tons of like little baby waterfalls. It was just gorgeous. Then all of a sudden, as I was jogging, I had to stop for a minute and whew, I was out of breath. I forgot that I was at 10,000 foot elevation there in the Breckenridge Mountains. And I'm a central Illinois girl, so I, I'm not sure what elevation we're at, but it's probably like zero. <laughs> so I live in flat lands. And so when I went to the mountains in Colorado, I had to stop for a minute and catch my breath. And I thought, oh my gosh, this hike is way harder than I wanted it to be. And so I was kind of disappointed at first, but then I stopped myself and reframed my mindset. And I thought, no, how lucky am I to be able to hike in the mountains of Colorado and my heart is feeling out of breath from the elevation, okay? That's so much better than my heart just not even being able to hike at all, okay? So the same thing when you look at sugar cravings, okay? You can absolutely think, oh, I'm gonna miss out on my favorite treat, right? And that's where our brain goes normally. Um, or you can stop and simply have a, a swap in your mindset, a mindset flip, and you can choose to decide, no, I don't want the sugary treat because it's not serving my weight loss goals or my health goals, okay? So just think of that as you're working through some of these sugar cravings. Um, I have a quick story to tell you about one of my clients um, before we dig in. She is awesome. She's a physical therapist, super smart. She had a really good habit of over her lunch break, she would walk to our local small town um, ice cream shop and she would get ice cream every single day. Well, she found that she really thought she could not give up this habit that she'd created of that urge or that that craving of her ice cream every day. Um, I had challenged my group of clients to a two week no sugar, no flour challenge. And it was hilarious because she freaked out. She said, Nicole, I cannot do this. There's no way I cannot eat ice cream every day at lunch when I take my walk. And I kind of chuckled, but I showed her, you know, I, I showed her, first of all, why that habit and that urge and craving was there in the first place. And then I used these same three simple steps with her. And within a couple of weeks, she had a couple lapses in there. Um, but after a couple of weeks, she thought, and she actually told me, she said, Nicole, I cannot believe it. I don't, I don't even crave this ice cream anymore. I don't want this ice cream. And I was able to kick that sugar craving that she was dealing with every day at noon. So it you can do it and you just have to understand too that feelings and these cravings and these urges that we have, they're simply just feelings. Even though they feel uncomfortable and very urgent, like we have to act on those now, um, we don't have to give into the urges. Make sure if you haven't caught the first part of this two-part series, um, in that first part, I shared all the science behind why we have our cravings and our urges there in the first place. But here today, we're getting ready to dig into the second part. This is the second part is where I want to show you what to do when you're having a craving and how to not give in to that sugar craving. Okay. So um, the first thing is, so let's pick an example. Okay. Let's still use the ice cream. Okay. So say um, the ice cream is in front of you. And your brain is telling you, you need the ice cream. You need the ice cream because it's full of sugar and your brain um, is telling you to eat the ice cream. If you want more information about that, uh, there's a really good book called The Dopamine Nation. Um, and it's actually written by Dr. Gebke. I saw her speak last year, she was awesome. But she actually works through a 30 day step-by-step -step plan on how to um, get off the like the dopamine withdrawals that you can have when you're struggling with an addiction, whether it's sugar or other addictions. So check that book out. It's really good. Okay. So, sorry, I got sidetracked. So before, so let's go back to the first step. So once you're, you have that ice cream in front of you, okay, we're going to use ice cream as the example, and your brain is telling you, eat that ice cream. Okay. What do we want to do first? Okay. There's three steps. The first step is to just pause and reflect. So just stop for a minute. 
Stop for a minute, okay? Before you act and eat that ice cream, take deep breaths, pay attention to what your thoughts are, and create a little space between that urge and your response of eating that ice cream, okay? And ask yourself a few questions when you're pausing. First of all, talk out loud to yourself, okay? <laughs> Everybody might not, might think you're crazy around you, but talk out loud to yourself. When you notice that you're having a craving or an urge for that ice cream, talk out loud. Say, this is an urge. This is a craving. This is normal. I'm having this urge because I'm human, okay? So that's the first thing is just say it out loud. Name it. Name that feeling. It's an urge, okay? And... Don't get all excited about it, okay? Don't start beating yourself up or uh, start getting all flustered. Just try to stay calm, pause, think for a minute, okay? And say out loud, this is an urge. This is normal. I am human, okay? So that's the first thing. Um, and while you're pausing and reflecting, also get curious. You know, why, why do I want this ice cream right now? Is it that I'm truly hungry physically? Or am I craving this because I'm emotionally um, emotionally hungry? Am I dealing with stress, boredom, or am I tired? Or whatever other angry, whatever other emotional um, triggers that are triggering you. So you want to pause, you want to reflect, and you want to know what is causing that craving and that urge. I have bad news for you. Um, cravings and urges never go away. They are always there because we're human and that is how our brain works. Um, but the good thing is you can learn how to not give into the craving. So that's step one. Step two, distract yourself, okay? These cravings last very short time. If you could distract yourself for 10 to 15 minutes, and usually it's only like two to three minutes before a craving passes, okay? So you have to distract yourself. So simple distraction is just get out of the kitchen or leave the, the break room at work if that's where you're, you're getting that craving. Um, or, you know, if you're at a, at a social gathering, walk away from the table that you're seeing um, that goodie that you really want, okay? So distract yourself for at least a few minutes, ideally 10 to 15 minutes, okay? Um, so that's the second thing is, first thing is recognize it, the second thing is distract. And then the last part, which most women don't realize this last piece, but you want to reward yourself for not giving into the, the craving or the urge. So if you don't eat that ice cream after 10 to 15 minutes, make sure you reward yourself. This is the secret right here is, and it could be a simple high five. Mel Robbins, she's great, she has some great podcasts, but she has the high five habit. But if you reward yourself, obviously not with something, with another piece of food, um, but reward yourself by giving yourself a high five, go tell somebody or go text somebody, hey, I didn't eat the ice cream today. Um, and make it a celebration when you don't give in to the urge, okay? Because you actually have to practice not giving in into, into an urge over and over and over again. I read somewhere that it, it can take up to a hundred times of not giving into an urge before this gets way easier to not give into urges and cravings. So it's a practice. You can't just do it one time and celebrate and be proud of yourself. That is awesome. That's a great start. But you have to do it over and over and over and over and over again, okay? Shoot for 100 times. Write it down. Make a chart for yourself, okay? So celebrate that success when you're not giving in as positive reinforcement, because that is training our brain. It's funny, our brains are trained um, also like with the sticker chart or an urge jar or um, lots of other different ways to like count up how many times you're practicing. 
that is a big piece too to retrain your brain to not give into an urge. And the last thing is don't beat yourself up. You are going to have lapses. You are going to eat another cookie when you really see it in front of you and you want it. And that's okay. The, the important thing here when you're working on your urges and cravings is don't beat yourself up about it. You're human. You have cravings. You have urges. It's because you're human. Okay. Um, and just get curious about it. Don't beat yourself up, but get curious. So when you do have another lapse and you give in um, to that cookie or that ice cream, then just get curious why it happened and what you can do going forward with these three steps to continue to work on not giving in, okay? So to just to summarize, when you have your next urge, I want you to stop and just think one, two, three. Okay, just think one, two, three. So when you see that ice cream, stop for a minute. Think one, two, three, okay? One is stop and ask yourself, why am I even having this urge, okay? Two, distract yourself for at least a few minutes. And then three, celebrate, reward yourself when you don't give into the urge, okay? I would absolutely love to hear back from you if you have found this helpful. So and how this works for you in your day-to-day -day life once you start using this. So please pause the video, hit subscribe, hit like. I would love to hear your comments. Please share that too. Also, because weight loss is different during this phase in our life, and if this resonates with you and you'd like support in your weight loss journey, let's chat about how we can work together. Start first by filling out the application that's linked in the show notes. And this, this application also has more details on the pricing and how we can collaborate there. I only work with a small number of clients at a time. So if personalized support and feedback sounds like what you're looking for, then let's connect. And also don't forget, I if you wanna get started right after Labor Day 2024, then I am offering that extra one month of coaching. So you'll get five months of coaching for the price of four so you can get through the holidays and into the new year with a coach supporting your weight loss journey. And these spots are gonna go and get filled quick. So if you're ready to start, complete that application now because I will fill them up first come, first serve. Okay, and this offer actually expires on Labor Day. So get your application in now. Thank you for joining. Have a great week.